Okay, hey, this is Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres, and then uh, <clears throat> it's still the 25th of February, and I'm still in the office. The video I made this morning was, like, pretty early this morning. It's pretty late right now. It's like 10. And I'm just shutting the lights off and getting ready to go in. Had a pretty good day for myself, uh, relaxing, and got a lot of work done in the shop here. And spent some time with the kids, uh, watched The Sound of Music. And have had some time to, to think. And um, I, want to, I want to be very clear with you all how I come to the conclusion of who I'm going to uh, lend my support to in the race for governor. And I want to be clear about why I think it's so important. Um, Michigan's got some problems, you know. We've got some black marks in our in our not so good column, and um, it is strictly because of poor leadership. All right, and that is a result of where we have been as a culture now for quite a long time. Um, I believe, and I've been telling this to people that I run into, that uh, I believe we're entering into an era of truth, like where when we identify something that is good, then we, we bring that to the forefront. But if something is bad, we don't just gloss over it. Like uh, when somebody takes an oath of office to protect and defend our constitutional rights, if they violate that, that is very serious. Right now it's just kind of, oh, well, he violated his oath, no big deal. But I, I don't think that's going to be the way we proceed from here on out. Um, I was, I've been waiting to hear the phrase return to rule of law. And I've been waiting to hear that to come from the commander in chief. And I did not hear that the other night at the state of the union address. But what I did hear was the constitution as it is written. I heard him say that. And, uh, so, okay, that's close. But anyway, um, I want to expound a little bit on my criteria for, uh, why I was so quick to be able to get behind Jim Hines. All right, well, okay, here it is. Um, this hat right here, see this? Sheepdog, all right? My wife got that for me. And I'm at a stage in my life where I really don't care what anybody thinks, but I do care what she thinks. And uh, when she got me this hat, it was kind of a surprise it was one of the nicest things that anybody's ever done to me, for me. <laughs> Best compliment that I've ever gotten. And I, I really have a lot of respect for her, and I care what she thinks. And she wouldn't have got it for me if, if it was just kind of a make-believe thing, you know. Like, I want to be a sheepdog. She got it for me because she, she believes that I am a sheepdog. And uh, let me explain what a sheepdog is. Um, I heard a briefing one time, or I was at a briefing one time, by a guy named uh, Lieutenant Colonel David Grossman. Um, he's an officer, and he is an Army officer. But it was still a good briefing, all right? And the briefing went something like this. Um, there's three types of people in the world. There's sheep, there's wolves, and then there's sheepdog. sheepdogs. And the sheep are your average, everyday person gets up, goes to work, students, you know, they just go about their business. They don't really want too much. They don't want to try to change anything. They just want to, you know, get their pizza and they get their job done, do their homework and just kind of have friends. And, you know, you're not the, the type of person that uh, is going to be a real spike, you know, or, or real low, you know, they're just very, very average. And that's a, a good strata of the, uh, the public is that way. They don't hurt each other. Sometimes they bump into each other a little bit, but nothing really bad. Then you have the wolves. And um, you should think about this. You should think about this, I think. The wolves uh, live close. Uh, sometimes they live in the shadows. Um, they sometimes make believe they're sheep. Um, and they masquerade a lot of times as sheep or other, right? But they are, they are not sheep. They intentionally hurt. They lie, they cheat, they steal. And usually they don't work. 
They don't work for their money. Um, and they live off the sheep. They prey on the sheep. They prey on the weaknesses of the sheep. And then there's the sheepdogs. <clears throat> the sheepdogs kind of look like wolves, so sometimes the sheep are a little afraid of them. Um, but the sheepdog never hurts the sheep. Uh, the sheepdog lives for the moment that he can get that wolf by the throat and destroy it. And um, in, our, in our society, or in, in our military, we try to breed that into our, our servants, right? That we protect our people. And I have found that a good winnowing uh, benchmark for that is the oath of office. If a man takes an oath of office before God and country to protect and defend the people, their document, the Constitution, and then and he's lying, he's impersonating a protector of the people. He's impersonating that. So that the the people or the sheep will think he will protect me, I will vote for him. And that's that's really uh, really poor. That's poor. And that's how you get poor leaders. That's how we get them. Because they're liars, they're cheaters, they're thieves, right? Okay, let's talk Heinz. Let's talk Dr. Jim Heinz. Heinz is a true sheepdog, through and through. And I believe he was born that way. A lot of us aren't. Yeah, a lot of us have to work at it. If, if you don't know where you are, and you decide that you want to be a, a, a sheepdog, you can work at it. You can work at it. And it's, uh, you know, putting, putting others first. It's um, being willing to risk everything for those that are weaker than you. Always looking out for the weaker guy. Um, you know, putting your safety second, you know, for others. Put it, putting your wealth second. Putting second for others. That's, that's what the sheepdog is. Now, Dr. Hines is, uh, is leaving or willing to leave. You want to talk about a servant. He's willing to leave a fruitful obstetrician practice. This is the guy that delivers babies. I've, I've done it. I've actually delivered about three babies. And uh, it's, it's a great thing. I mean, it's, there's nothing like it, you know, bringing life into the world. Here's a guy that's got a successful practice doing that, and he's saying, okay, I'll, I'll serve you all as your governor. You, you, you know, your governor is actually the top servant, right? They are, they are public servants. They are there to take care of and fend off the wolves that surround the sheep. And um, you know, we know who the wolves are. We just... We just don't have proper leadership to take care of it. And it, a lot of times it falls down to like my level. And that's good, but it's not as good as it could be. We could have somebody at that top level as governor that is a ferocious, ferocious sheepdog that just looks for the wolves. Can't wait to get his choppers on their throat. Can't wait. Lives for the day. Um, and... That's who Heinz is. There's no doubt about it. If you meet him, you will see that is exactly who he is. All the other candidates that I have encountered, they say that's who they are, but that's not who they are. They're masquerading as sheepdogs, but they are truly wolves. They're looking for their next job. They're looking for their next meal, and they want to take advantage of you all to get your votes so that they can get that top slot. You think a guy like Shooty really wants to be a servant of the, the general public? Why would that guy want to serve anybody but himself? And that's all we've ever seen is, is him serve himself and his, the best interest of the other wolves that uh, seem to find their way in leadership or close to the top of leadership, but it doesn't have to be that way. Okay, this is Mark from Baker's Green Acres. Remember, anyone can farm.